Hello, my friend. It's your friend again, John Clement, with another edition of Wake Up Everybody. And I want you to understand, just like you, I have also been duped by these personal influencers online that are telling you that you can make $10 million in one day. Well, this is a video we're going to review right now by a person who is talking about if personal finance influence were honest, this is what they would tell you. It's some of the same things that I've spoken about for many, many years, some of the same things that every one of you can know for sure, but I want you to hear it so maybe it might trigger in your brain and get you to realize some realistic ways and things of really making uh, wealth and ways that are just scams that earn money for other folks. So let's get into this video. We're going to look at this video. We're going to play it a little fast because that's how I watch videos. And we're going to stop it every now and then and just chat a little bit. But watch this. The link of this whole video is in the description. Now, if you don't know, I normally watch most videos at about 1.25 to one and a half times speed because I have points that I'm looking for and information I'm trying to get. I'm not trying to be entertained. I'm actually trying to be informed. So let's get going right here. Personal finance influencers encourage their followers to believe in a distorted reality where all you have to do to become rich is make a few changes to your finances. While financial literacy is instrumental to money management, and the advice offered by these gurus takes on an overly optimistic approach. That well, let's stop real quick. Financial literacy, that is a big word, but it's something that should be taught in school. It is not. I remember when I was coming to school, we had to go through accounting and we had to also manage, learn how to balance your checkbook. They don't do none of that crap anymore. You know why? Because they don't want you to know about money so you don't know that you're getting jacked of it every day. That is based on the success of a few individuals and completely undermines economics as a whole. The likelihood. The likelihood any average person building wealth by saving money by investing and living frugally is highly unlikely is basically zero to none but personal finance youtube doesn't want you to know that because well personal finance youtube is a very lucrative business welcome back to another video if you're new here i used to be a personal finance content creator myself until i realized that a lot of what i come to learn about money through personal finance advice wasn't based on fact so in today Listen to that. She said it's not based on fact. Most of these people who are teaching you how to make money, they're making their money by teaching you how to make money. They haven't actually done anything. And they're just giving you information that they regurgitated, something they found, a book that they've read, and you are paying them thousands to millions of dollars for really no firsthand information. Today's video, I am going to share what personal finance influencers don't want you to know about saving money, creating passive income, and the most shocking thing you will ever hear about lifestyle creep, which I'm pretty sure is going to piss a lot of people off. So why don't we just get right on with the video? One second income. Anytime I mention poverty on this channel, I get a stream of comments responding that poverty is a choice and that people can change their situations. This, of course, is a conservative media talking point that has been appropriated by personal finance YouTube. And if you are one of those people who believes that, honestly, I feel sorry for you. Unless you are wealthy, you have zero, zero control over your finances. Now here's where we're going to disagree. I believe you do have control over your finances, how you choose to make your money and how you choose to spend your money. And that is under your control. The amount of money that someone else gives you, that's not that much under your control. You can move up in the system, but you do have control over your finances. You can choose to go burn your money on some bullshit, or you can choose to save money, only invest in certain things that would actually make you money. And Get all of your shit together financially. You can do that. 
and you can make smart financial choices. So you have some degree of control. It doesn't matter how strict you are with your budget, how much money you get to save by living under your means. We are all, you and me, and a lot of other people in this country, one medical emergency away from losing it all, losing employment or stable housing or becoming chronically ill. It's I've said this multiple times. Most people cannot survive uh, a $500 emergency. There's a lot of people right now who are very broke and poor and living in uh, housing, not taking a regular job because their wages will be garnished if they actually took a job because they owe medical bills or some other bills. So it's very important that you understand that, yes, you are one damn emergency away from being in poverty, but you still have control of that. You can do things to mitigate that. Is a life event that can completely derail your finances in a way that is out of your control. So think about that next time you want to tell me that poor people want to be poor. Emergency funds are important, and I will always encourage people to save money whenever they can. However, as corporate greed is driving up inflation and wages are remaining stagnant, emergency funds have become harder to save for most people. Some 56% of Americans are unable to cover an unexpected $1,000 bill with savings, according to a telephone survey. A reliable. Now, I've said this just a minute ago, but the premise that she has that emergency fund won't save you is 50 50 how I agree with it. If you don't have a, let me just say what I, I believe. You should have a short-term emergency fund of around 5000 a long-term emergency fund that's about a year's worth of your money. Then, and then if an emergency happens, it won't eat into your long-term uh, emergency fund so much. But this is what most people preach for you to take all your money, start um, paying off debt, then start building a little nest egg for emergency fund. And as soon as one thing happens, that shit is gone. My son had his vehicle get messed up. He had to pay $4,600 right off the bat. If he just had a little teeny tiny emergency fund, that is gone. So you got to have $5,000 cash ready to move, then a long-term emergency fund of your complete gross income for the year. That's what will save you. That's what we'll, you should be building up to. Then pay off debt. Let's keep going. Well, emergency fund should consist of three to six months worth of expenses, and that can vary from household to household. When you're living with a low income, and in many instances, when you're middle class, what you can save each month is very little. And then once you save that's that why money, you go get make money more money. Go get a business or start right? another get repairs, another job. Something. Anything that breaks around the house, an unexpected trip, and then what? One of the major blind spots in personal finance content across the board is the responsibility to acknowledge how a lot of people are simply not able to save money. You cannot save money if you don't make enough. And there, there you go. That's what they mean. That's what, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You need to take control of your finances by either starting a business to make more money or working more to make more money. That's the only way you're going to do it. It's not going to happen on your meager salary. That's what means taking control, not just living paycheck to paycheck, doing something to add additional income, just an additional thousand dollars a month from a part time job would change most people's lives significantly. This next point right here, I like. If personal finance gurus told you that investing is only for the rich, you wouldn't buy their books, pay for their courses or watch their videos. They also would lose out on the thousands of dollars they receive in sponsorships from investing apps. Believing that investing can make you rich is not only naive, but it can actually hurt you financially. For starters, the stock market is so volatile and hard to predict. And now, why do people like the word investing? For one, it's sexy. Two, they don't think they have to do anything. They think that they could put their little $50, $25 a month into some account, and it's going to magically triple and quadruple every day. And then at the end of one year, you'll have $10,000 from the $100 you put in there. That's bullshit. Those are dreams that people put into your brain so they can take more control of the money that you have. Putting money away for someone else to in put invest it for you that you call investing is stupid until you have money. Plus, you're not going to be able to make money unless you got money. Listen, keep listening. And anyone promising to teach you how to invest to get rich is lying to you. Investing is a long-term 
Woo! Say that again. Anybody teaching you how to invest to get rich is lying to you. Anyone teaching you how to invest to get rich is lying to you because it takes money to make money. And investment is a long-term gain. Even people putting money in their 401ks right now. It's better than nothing, but you could do something a lot better with that money right now than just sitting it aside, hoping that it's going to do something by the time you retire. That $200,000 you saved up until you're 65, by the time you get that money, you're going to get about 100000 That's going to take you about one or two years to go through. And then what? Come on now, people. Wake up. A financial strategy, and it's going to take decades for you decades. to see returns. Decades. Any investing strategy for someone who is not wealthy is contingent on not having to pull out your investments to cover a life emergency. Another reason mm -hmm. why investing is not going to make you rich is that you need money to invest. Yep. What a concept. You need money and lots of it at that to make money. Investing $5 a day will not Thank make you a millionaire by shit. the time you're 50. It can make you a fraction, a very small fraction of a million dollars, but then you have to adjust those numbers or taxes and inflation. Not to mention, this this always gets over people's heads. Why would you put whatever little money you can save in the stock market? That money belongs in a savings account. So when you need it, you can access it right away. Exactly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be a bus kill. We're halfway through the video, but you're never going to be a millionaire. According to the Federal Reserve data, the top 1% of households in America owns all the wealth. Do I even have to See, everybody's focusing on trying to be a millionaire. You know that you can have an awesome, awesome life on about $150,000 to $250,000 a year. If you're within that window, you can have a great life as long as you are putting your, using your money correctly, putting your money and having all your stuff taken care of out of debt. You can have a great life. Everybody's focused on a million, being a millionaire and a billionaire because it's the buzzwords, it's cute, and you've never had money before. So you don't know what money can do for you. So millions seem like the number to reach for. And I'm telling you, 150 to 250,000, you will live a great life. Great life. To explain how the odds are against you. Then you get your clear choice. Poverty is not a mindset, it's a reality. And people living in poverty cannot change their economic status by changing their thoughts. Now, there's a lot of people who talk about mindset, changing the mindset and having this certain mentality that will, or um, this thought process that will change your world. I guarantee you, if you would follow the advice of people who are giving you good advice, even if you didn't believe it, even if your mind was jacked up, it would still work. That is a misconception that I have for a long time, that you have to have a certain mentality to be successful. No, you don't. You just got to listen and do the shit that people who are successful tell you to do. You ain't got to change your mind to do nothing except for listen and do. You have to change your mind to be a doer of the correct information. But this whole, oh, if I get a positive mindset, if I believe it, I can achieve it. No, if you do it, you're going to get through it. Not if you believe it, you can achieve it. Personal finance influencers love to use buzzwords like mindset and abundance because it's more engaging. Titling a video I have my first six-figure month using an abundance mindset. Here's how. It's clickbait. And it works. This video has 1.3 million views, making it the most popular video on this creator's channel. I watched the entire video, and there's no actual advice on how to use abundance to make this kind of money. She now, you see that? That's where the problem comes in. People will tell you, oh, yes, if, you, if this is happening and you believe it, you achieve it, and you change your mindset, and you surround yourself, there's really no actionable steps to do. There's nothing actionable. This is why I can watch YouTube videos so fast, because I'm looking for the actions. Not all this fluff, fluff, not all this rah, rah, hype, hype shit. You need actions. What's step one? What's step two? What's step three? Now you can look at some stuff. 
information, implementation, evaluation. You can't do nothing unless you actually get some steps to do. Don't just tell me how great my life will be. Tell me how I get it. Didn't give any action steps to go from working multiple jobs to making $100,000 a month. I mean, the number itself bugs me because do you know how hard it is to make a hundred thousand dollars a year she doesn't say how she makes this money how many streams of income allow her to make one hundred thousand dollars a month nor does she show proof what a time to be alive where you can tell millions of people that you're going to teach them how to make one hundred thousand dollars a month and you don't show proof no hate to this creator of course she is using this platform in the way that is meant to be used there's obviously an audience there you go. That's another thing I like. Proof. You got to be able to show somebody something. I remember when I first had my kids, got married, everybody in the family was telling me about how to raise their kids, how to raise my kids. And I looked and I was like, well, how the hell are you going to tell me how to raise my kids when your kids is messed up? Same thing financially. How can somebody tell you how to do something that they've never done? How can they tell you how to make a million dollars if they haven't made it actually doing the same thing you they're telling you to do? I can tell you how to be a super top salesman. I've done it. I can tell you how to get nine houses and manage 19. I've done it. I can tell you how to run basketball league from, from East Coast to West Coast because I've done it. I can tell you how to get a number two hit record on the European radio charts because I've done it. I can tell you how to tour around Europe singing because I've done it. Don't listen to people who haven't done what they're telling you to do, exactly what they're telling you, not just the hype and not just you paying for their information because you believe that they're going to take you all the way through it. Have proof. Make sure they give you proof that they've done it and they have the scars to show for it and the success. Audience for this type of content, the video was clickbait and it worked, but I was very surprised to see the comments under that video and how many people are eating it up. And my concern is for the people who are in clear financial need in, in such a bad place with their finances that they're willing to believe anything. That's because they don't care and, and they're not they don't to want these to videos learn and this type of marketing because it's nothing but marketing. This creator might not be selling a course, but they are certainly promoting their channel. I'm sure that video brought thousands of dollars in subscribers, which are currency on YouTube. It's easier to think and believe that you have the power to change your reality than it is to accept the hard truth. Poverty is so hard to escape. And a lot of people don't want to hear it. And I understand I've been there myself. I to rank the mindset and abundance Kool-Aid until it didn't work. It didn't work for my reality because it's ever changing. We are all exposed to so many elements of society that can change our finances in a heartbeat. There's no denying the benefit of changing your relationship with money to a more positive one. However, I think we need to challenge our own mindset about poverty and recognize the mental toll that poverty, living in poverty, takes on people. When you are struggling to make ends meet, living paycheck to paycheck, you don't have the bandwidth for anything else, let alone happy thoughts about money. Imagine working hard for years to increase your income and not improving your lifestyle. Where's the logic in that? Personal finance YouTubers treat lifestyle inflation as a moral failing, but I'm here to tell you otherwise. Lifestyle inflation is misconstrued as overindulging in frivolous purchases, when in reality, spending more money when you earn more is inevitable. Inflation is at an all-time high. I don't know about you, but when I make money, I want to use it. That was the whole point. Money is a tool to me. So when I make more money, I want to be able to use it. I don't want to have to not go to Starbucks or scarf away and stick away every little dime so I don't have any enjoyment of life. I want to be able to take the vacations. I want to be able to, um, you know, I don't really care about so many cars or things like this. My enjoyment of my money is the traveling. So whatever makes you happy with your money, you should be able to do it. And all these people are telling you to not do nothing till you, you know, put all this money. You got to be able to enjoy your life also. And the money you're just sticking away doing nothing with it, it's losing its value. Take advantage of it, but make the money first. Make your money, change your life, then go do the things you love to do. That's where I'm at.
I and goods and services are more expensive than ever. But I would like to argue that increasing your spending once your income increases can be incredibly beneficial. A few examples of that can be moving to a more expensive city for a better yeah, paying get job, up out of the investing drug areas. in better get up out the hood. more expensive clothing if you are serious about your career, buying a house in a safer neighborhood when you're starting a family, or purchasing a new car to drive your kids around because it's more reliable. The lifestyle inflation denial. This is the thing that, once again, you see this junk with these rappers and stuff. They want to be hard and claim, I don't forget where I come from and live in the hood. I mean, they were making millions of dollars. You see these people get killed stupidly in the stupidest places. Perfect example last time. This takeoff got killed watching the dice game. Well, you making millions of dollars. Why the hell are you even bothering about a damn dice game? You should be out of that hood. You should be in Beverly Hills, some big place that's guarded. As you increase your money, you need to increase your doggone surroundings. You need to upgrade your life, your thinking, your surroundings, your people. You need to keep upgrading as your money increases. Myers fail to acknowledge the pleasure of simply enjoying the fruits of your hard work. That's what no I'm saying. Helps to earn more money just to earn more, right? We wish to earn more money to live better and enjoy life. Hey, it's Ryan Reynolds, as owner of- How to generate is a popular subset of personal Passive finance YouTube. Income. And that is because who doesn't want to earn money the easy way? I can make an entire video on why passive income is a fairy tale if you're interested in that. But for now, I want to talk about some of the ideas that these videos suggest. Some of the most- Passive income is very attractive to people because they don't want to do anything. You don't want to work. That's why it's easy for you to have a job because someone else has already put in all the real effort. All you got to do is give them your labor and time. That's why it's so passive income jumps at people because they're like, I don't have to do anything and I still make money. Oh, yes, let's do that. That's why you get scammed. I know because I did it. For years and years, I was scammed by all these different things. We used to have to, you know, clip out the ads, you know, when it was in the in the classifiers or watch one of them infomercials. They scam you in so many better ways now. But it's still the same thing. Make money by doing nothing. That will never, never work. Popular ones are offering paid memberships, selling ebooks, content creation, LOL, selling digital products, affiliate marketing, and of course, investing. A critical look at some of these suggestions will tell you that these passive income ideas are actually time consuming and they require an upfront investment of money and time. So if you are someone already working one or two jobs and barely getting by, sorry, these are not for you. Another important fact that never gets mentioned in these videos is how difficult it yes. is to sell it anything. Is very online. hard. We very are living hard. through unprecedented times where everything online is oversaturated. Everyone's Who are you selling. going to sell all these digital products to? And where are your customers? How do you find them? What products, courses, and memberships can you sell? And why are these creators? glossing over the fact that you need to have some sort of expertise to charge for anything. If you have ever done content creation or built a website or written an ebook, which is laughable, I mean, actual talented writers have a hard time getting published or having anybody buy the works. Why would you think that you can just write an ebook and, and develop passive? See, these are dreams and I don't mind people dreaming. But damn, there's a point where you got to wake up, stop dreaming and start doing stuff. Most people just want stuff to fall out of the air and hit them in the head and stuff to happen. It doesn't work like that. But this is why there's a billion dollar industry of selling all these online education, because people want to try to learn themselves into money. You have to do you have to do things to make money. It's information implementation. You got to do something for shit to work, not just learn all this stuff. And then they say, well, you know, da, 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 da. it's all these things people are trying to do. That's so easy. Easy never work for nothing. It's just luck. You might as well just take your money and go buy a lottery ticket every day and just hope for something to happen. If that's what you want to do, you got to work. You got to work.
of income. It's insane. It takes hours upon hours to figure things out when you are doing them yourselves, right? And it is assumed that people watching these videos, looking for these uh, types of content, don't have the means to outsource anything. They have to try to do that themselves. I know a lot of people are going to look at this video and think that I'm being overly negative. Not I think me, it's important to have me. realistic expectations of what personal finance can do for you in order to avoid making mistakes that are going to cost you a lot of money. A lot of these personal finance personalities are selling you a dream that is not attainable. And this makes you more susceptible to scams. I was recently looking through the services offered by one of the personal finance influencers who has become really popular on Instagram. And to my surprise, this creator who has no financial education background, no sort of- I'm gonna stop it right here. I just wanna let you know, this is what we're talking about. This is what I'm talking about. When your hope and dream is to be a millionaire by doing nothing, you are super susceptible to scams. So what will happen is that you'll save up your little coins and you'll take that little bit of money and go purchase this course that's going to change your life. Never do anything in the course, nine times out of 10. Or you might read some stuff, watch a couple of videos, but never really put it into play. Then you complain again about not having money and you save up a little bit more money. Then you find some other online guru telling you're going to make a million dollars by not doing nothing. And what you do again, you spend your little money in and nothing happens. You know how I know? Because that was me up until the age of almost about 35. That was me until I actually started just doing stuff. I just said, you know what? Let me do something. I started a basketball team. I started six basketball teams, started a league, started working with a bunch of people, doing stuff, working in the communities, started um, buying houses, fixing houses, multiple houses, working with other people with houses, continue. You got to do something. Stop trying to pay a little, your little bit of money to try to make millions by doing shit. It's not going to work. This is the last thing I'm saying to you right now. Take the time to get your finances in order. Become a good steward of your money. Build your emergency funds. Then pay off your debt. In the process, if you need to make more money, you need to start yourself a business that can earn you somewhere between $1,000 to $4,000 more a month or get another job. But you need more income to be able to do the rest of it. More income will allow you to build your emergency funds, which then will allow you to be able to invest and continue to change your life from that point on. That's all I got right now. John's out. I'll holler at you later.